Hello friends. So this holiday represents a very one that is close to me. It is the birthday celebration of both Artemis and Apollo. So Artemis was born first, so tradition has it that her the day before is to Artemis and the next day is to Apollo. And to celebrate this, this video is dedicated to Apollo and Artemis. It's a ritual to them and their mother, Leto, without whom they would not be. A lot of credit doesn't go to Leto, and, um, but there is no Apollo and Artemis without Leto in the story. So to celebrate, again, this is going to be a ritual to Apollo, Artemis, and a prayer to Leto. And also I'm going to read the myth of what happened after Apollo was born. It's a very awesome story. And it doesn't really go, what I read doesn't really go into the myth of them actually being born. But Artemis was in the myth, born first, and she actually helped deliver Apollo. So I don't talk about that in Apollo's myth, but it's interesting what happens in this story. And I hope you guys like this video. Anyway, guys, here's to the Twins of Olympus. clothed divine mother twins great-hearted queen to whom we pray the lot fell to you to endure the birth pains and to be blessed with the children of zeus you bore apollo and artemis who pours arrows as well her and ortiega him on rugged delos here O divine mistress and come with a gracious heart to our holy right honoring all gods and bring a sweet end Hear me, queen, many named daughter of Zeus, Titanus, boisterous, and great named holy archer, with a torch shining on all, attending birth. You help women in childbirth, although you are not initiated in childbirth yourself. Frenzy loving hunter, who loosens bonds and chases cares away, you love the hunt, running and roaming at night, pouring arrows. You bind up and you loosen kind-hearted with masculine nature. Orthia, grant her a quick birth. Damon, who nurtures mortals, you are most divine, though earthly, slaying beasts and ritually blessed. You who governs the mountain copes of the oak, who shoots deer, blessed lady, queen of all, beautiful child forever. Many-shaped, wood-haunting, protector of dogs, Cody and goddess, Come, divine and beloved Savior, gracious to all initiates, bring her fair, fair fruits from the earth, a lovely peace and health too, with her beautiful hair, and send away pain and disease to the peaks of the mountains. Come, blessed Paian, hear me praying for the people and have a kindly heart. For you see the boundless ether, the rich earth from above, and through the dead of night, in still silence, under starry-eyed darkness, you perceive the roots below. You hold the cosmic bounds. You have concern for the first and the last. Decked with flowers, you harmonize the poles with your quick, striking lyre. Arriving now at the highest string, then turning downward to the lowest ones in Doric mode. Balancing the poles, you draw in distinctions between living nations. In harmony, you measure a common share to people, an equal mix of winter and summer for each of them. And you pick out the notes, the lowest with winter and the highest for summer. In the Doric modes, you play for spring's much-loved and flowery season. 
For this mortal celebrate you in song, and call you Lord and Pan, the two-horned God, who sends forth the whistling songs of the winds, wherefore you hold the seal of the cosmos. Hear me, blessed one, the initiates cry, supplicants for you to be their savior. Apollo is the son of Zeus and Leto, and he was born beneath the shade of the palm tree which grows at the foot of Mount Synthus on the barren and rocky island of Delos. The poet tells us that the earth smiled when the young god first beheld the light of day, and that Delos became the so, so proud and exultant at the honor thus conferred upon her that she covered herself with golden flowers. Swans surrounded the island, and the Delian nymphs celebrated his birth with songs of joy. The unhappy Leto, driven to Delos by the relentless persecutions of Ira, was no longer permitted to enjoy her haven of refuge. But still tormented by her enemy, the young mother was once more obliged to fly. She therefore resigned the charge of her newborn babe to the goddess Themis, who carefully wrapped the helpless infant in swaddling clothes and fed him with nectar and ambrosia. But he had soon no longer partaken of the heavenly food than to the amazement of the goddess, he burst asunder the bands which confined his infant limbs, and springing to his feet, appeared before her as a full-grown youth of divine strength and beauty. He now demanded a lyre and a bow, declaring that henceforth he would be announcing to mankind the will of his father Zeus. The golden lyre, he said, shall be my friend, the bent bow my delight, and in oracles will I foretell the dark future. With these words he ascended to Olympus, where he was received with joyful acclamations into the assembly of the celestial gods, who acknowledged him as the most beautiful and glorious of all the sons of Zeus.